Hi colleagues, my name is Sean McMahon and I'm the community college professor down here in San Diego. And like many of you dealing with the coronavirus, we have to put a lot of time into figuring out how to test and quiz our students online. And one of the difficulties I had was to try to figure out how to do quizzes using scientific notation because we use it so much. So I kind of wanted to make a quick video and show you guys a, a, a way to kind of work around that um, and how you could have answers in scientific notation in case you didn't know how to do that. So one of the things is you have two types of quizzes. You have classic quizzes and new quizzes. And the way you do scientific notation is slightly different in both. I'm not going to make a video about which one is better. I'll let you guys kind of look at the features. This is primarily just to show you how to do scientific notation. So I'll do one of each. I'll start with classic quizzes, just because some of you might be a little more familiar with that. And when doing that, uh, I'll just leave it as an unnamed quiz. Uh, when you're making questions, you can go in and you can type in, uh, you could choose, let's say, a numerical answer. I already kind of picked uh, a question type. That way this video isn't too long. And the question I picked uh, is one that's going to involve using Avogadro's number. So for example, find the number of iron atoms in 5.75 grams of iron. So one of the things you want to do is for students to enter scientific notation, they have to use lower E in classic quizzes. So they have to use a lowercase e for classic quizzes. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, you would type that in as 6.022 e to the 23rd. So I already know the answer to this question. It's um, 6.2 e to the 22. So I would leave it as that. Now, one of the problems is you want to make sure to leave a margin of error. So for my margin of error, I might type in, um, let's see, uh, 0.3 e to the 22, which is roughly, it's, it's roughly 5% error. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And what I wanna make sure is that this would actually work. So if I save this, I could edit it again, but what I can also do is preview. So I wanna do a preview and I'm gonna type in the answer 6.2 e to the 22, and it should work. So let's submit this quiz. And you see that for the students, it's going to work. Again, you have to have a margin of error. I like doing about 5%. And that way they can enter in scientific notation with a numerical answer. It's very similar if you do it with uh, new quizzes. The major difference is if I go to new quizzes, it's a little bit different. Um, and I'll just say practice quiz for a title, come down here, save. As Soon as I save it, it should allow me to build a quiz. If I go here and I pick a question type, I can go again to numerical answers, click that. And then I can type in my question. And it's very similar, the major difference is it's a capital E in new quizzes. So instead of a lowercase e, they have to do a capital E, and that will get them the right answer. So again, it's the same question, same answer. I'm going to type in 6.2, but instead of lowercase e, capital E, because this is new quizzes, to the 22nd, and it puts it automatically in scientific notation for me. So um, you can go ahead, hit done when you're, you're finished. And you can preview this quiz as well.
I was trying to make this a quick video. Sorry, my internet might be a little slow. It's taken a little while to load here. I just wanted to show you. So again, if you type in that answer, 6.2 uppercase E 22 and submit it. It shows that I got it right and it puts it in scientific notation. So I hope that helps. Again, colleagues, if it's classic quizzes, you're going to do a lowercase e. And if it's new quizzes, you're going to do an uppercase e. Thanks for watching, and I hope that helps.